I'm Bill with Tandem Cross, making good guns great. Before I get started, let me ask you to please like and share this video on whatever social media platform you found it on. Follow us if you're not already following us on Facebook and Instagram. And if you're watching on YouTube, please click subscribe and the notification bell so that whenever we upload a new video, you'll find out ASAP. Now with that out of the way, let me introduce you to the Blast Pack for Ruger Mark IV series pistols. The Blast Pack includes the new Thunder Hammer and Lightning Sear, as well as our Blast Shield Mag Disconnect replacement. The Thunder Hammer and Lightning Sear are both made from heat-treated high-impact S7 tool steel for long-lasting optimal performance. The Thunder Hammer is lightened for higher velocity and shorter lock time, and the Lightning Sear is neutrally balanced for drop safety. The radius hammer and sear interface plus their lubricated coating give you a clean, crisp, repeatable trigger pull of approximately 2 to 2.5 pounds right out of the box. The blast shield allows for safe removal of the mag disconnect feature while also improving your magazine alignment so your pistol feeds more reliably. Plus, the blast shield's design will protect your new hammer and sear from debris and buildup, making maintenance easier. If you don't already have our Victory Trigger for the Mark Series pistols, you can get the Ultimate Trigger Kit, which is the Blast Pack plus the Victory Trigger. However, I'm not going to be showing you how to install the Victory Trigger in this video. This one's just about the Blast Pack. That's because the install process for the Trigger is kind of a totally different process than for the three parts in the Blast Pack, and it's already well documented in its own series of videos, which are going to be linked in the description. On top of that, the three parts in the Blast Pack are compatible with both the standard Mark IV models and the 2245 models, but there's a separate trigger for each of them. So to avoid confusion, we're just going to refer you to each trigger's own separate video. Now going back to the Blast Pack, it's kind of a long process. We are installing three separate parts, but it's not hard. It doesn't require any special tools, and it doesn't require any permanent modifications to your pistol, so anyone can do it. Let me show you how it goes. To do this install, you will need a 3 seconds Allen wrench, a 1.5 millimeter Allen wrench, and needle nose pliers. If you haven't removed your mag disconnect, you will need an empty mag, and a C-clamp or a bench vise like this will be extremely helpful as a third set of hands. To start, as always, make sure that your gun is clear and safe. And if it is, you can make sure that your safety is set to safe and press the takedown button to pop the upper off. Then set your safety to fire. Insert the empty mag if you still have your mag disconnect. If you don't, you don't need to. And then put your hand or a finger in front of the hammer so that the hammer doesn't smash down and pull the trigger to carefully let the hammer down. Then you can remove the magazine. And you can remove your grips. Many grips use 332nd screws, um, but some don't, so you may need a different tool. Then use the 1.5 millimeter Allen wrench to remove the right side safety. If you still have the safety lever, you know, you'll be removing the lever. If you have removed that lever, then you'll have to remove the screw and the spacer that replaces it, like I have. I recommend making sure your safety is set to safe for this next step. It makes the spring and detent inside the safety less likely to come out. But then you can use your 3 30 seconds Allen wrench to punch out the safety lever. I recommend also putting your hand or a finger over the hammer so that the hammer doesn't spring out when the lever comes out. Push the lever out just part way, and that way it will expose the spring and detent inside it, hopefully without them falling out and you losing it, and then you can take it out and carefully set it aside. Then again, put a hand or a finger over the hammer so that nothing comes flying out when you remove the lever 
but then you can pull that safety lever the rest of the way out. Set it aside. Set your safety plate aside. And pull out the hammer and mag disconnect and spring assembly and set that aside. We will come back to that later. So next, grab your 1.5 millimeter Allen wrench and punch out this little pin just behind the bolt release lever. That's the pin that holds the sear in place and the sear spring. Set that pin aside, and then when you pull the Allen wrench back out, the sear and sear spring should fall out the bottom of the pistol. You can set those aside. You will not be needing either of them again. Now open up your brand new blast pack package. Inside it, you will find a lightning sear and a brand new sear spring. Take a look at your sear first. When it's installed in the frame, it will be oriented like this. If you take a closer look, just to make sure you get the orientation right, you will see this fin on the back of it. The fin has to be pointing backwards with it on the right side. You'll also notice this notch in the sear body right near the central pivot hole. That notch is gonna be facing towards the left side of the frame. That notch is where the sear spring goes. You want to make sure that the short leg of the spring is facing forward and is under the top of that notch, the top ledge of that notch. When the sear spring is installed correctly, the long leg of it will be in this window in the frame. Now grab your C-clamp. This is where your third hand is going to be very helpful. We'll set the frame in that clamp just so that it balances upright. And then grab the sear and sear pin. And the needle nose pliers. First, from the right side of the firearm. Just to be clear, the gun is facing towards me at this point, so you know what looks like the left right now is actually the right. Put the sear pin in just part way. Then grab the sear by the top with the needle nose pliers. Make sure it's oriented correctly with that fin in the back and then lower it down into the frame and push the pin in not all the way in, but just far enough to catch the sear and hold it in place. So now you can see that the sear is sitting more or less where it's supposed to be and the pin is partially installed holding the sear in place. I find that tipping the sear back a bit helps facilitate getting the sear spring installed correctly lets you see that notch where the sear spring will go. So now what we're gonna do is grab our new sear spring and our needle nose pliers. Grab the spring with the pliers from the short end
like so. And we'll lower that down into the pistol body as well. And now, once the sear spring is down where it's supposed to be, you're gonna wanna push that pin the rest of the way through so that it catches the sear spring and goes all the way through to the other side of the pistol frame. And so now, if you take another close look, you'll see that the sear spring leg is in that window on the side. And the sh short leg of the sear spring is in front of that top portion of the sear. Next, to get the rest of this installed, we need to trap the sear in a rotated forward position like it would be under the hammer once the hammer is installed. Hopefully you can see the back of the magwell, there's this ledge that if you wedge something like a 1.5 millimeter Allen wrench between the sear and that back of the magwell, you can trap the sear in the, a forward rotated position. And that's what we're gonna do. It may still be helpful to have it in the clamp for this step. You're gonna wanna grab your 1.5 millimeter Allen wrench, rotate the sear as far forward as you can, and beneath it, but above the back of that magwell, you'll wedge the 1.5 millimeter Allen wrench in. And if you do it correctly, the sear will stay rotated forward, like so. And when you do this, you definitely want to try to get the Allen wrench as in the middle of that channel down the middle of the frame as possible. It will make installing everything else much easier if it's not off to one side. At this point, I recommend dropping your safety plate into place along the left side of the frame. If it's in place correctly, you'll see the color painted dots on the safety plate in that window. But then you can set the lower aside for now and we'll deal with the hammer and blast shield. So grab your hammer and mag disconnect assembly. What you're gonna wanna do is just grab the bushing and pull it out. If it can't be pulled out with your fingers, you can push it out from the other side with a tool like a punch or an Allen wrench. You'll be using the stock bushing with the new hammer and blast shield, but you can set the other parts aside. Grab your thunder hammer and your blast shield. In the pistol, the thunder hammer and blast shield will be oriented as shown, except that the two holes will line up and the bushing will go through them from the right side to the left side. Like so. All right, you're gonna wanna arrange your hammer and blast shield in this sort of L shape, like so. Bring the trigger bar down and put the edge of the bushing into that loop on the trigger bar. Make sure that your blast shield gets around that Allen wrench that's wedged under the sear, but then you can drop the blast shield and hammer assembly down into the pistol. The next thing we'll be installing is the safety lever. At this point, it's probably easier to not have it in the clamp actually. 
so I'm gonna set that aside. And I'm going to install in that hole the safety lever. And I'm gonna put it in just far enough to hold all the pieces in place, but not all the way through just yet. There we go. So I haven't pushed it all the way in yet because I still need to install the spring and detent in the back of that safety lever. Goes in that tiny little hole. Spring first, and then detent. Once it's in there, you can push it the rest of the way in. Oftentimes, you will probably find that the safety plate kind of drops down and prevents you from actually pushing it all the way in. So you can use your Allen wrench or a finger to pull it up out of the way so that the stud on the safety lever can go through that semicircular cutout on the safety plate. If it's installed properly, operating the safety lever will move the safety plate up and down. Now you can pull out that Allen wrench that holds the sear in place. The sear will be held in place because the hammer is installed. We're almost done. Grab your right side safety lever or the spacer that replaces it and screw it back in with the 1.5 millimeter Allen wrench. Next, I'm gonna put my grips back on. And now before we put the upper back on, it is probably a good time to check your function, make sure that the hammer can cock back, make sure that the safety is operating correctly. And make sure that when you pull the trigger, the hammer comes down like it's supposed to. Don't forget, always catch it. It's possible to damage the blast shield if you don't stop your hammer from just slamming down when the upper's not on it, so be very careful with that. But as you can see, everything seems to be working just fine for me. So cock the hammer back one last time. and grab your upper and put it back on. Everything seems like it's in working order, so we are done. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions or suggestions about this video, be sure to let me know in the comments. And don't forget to click like and subscribe and that little notification button so that you are the first to know whenever we upload new videos. You can also find us elsewhere on the internet, like Facebook and Instagram. And of course, you can find our products at www.tandemcross.com. See ya! Hey, I just wanted to say thank you for watching all the way to the end, and thank you for watching for the past four years, if you've been with us that long. This is actually going to be my last video for Tandem Cross. I'm moving on to teach music, which is what I went to school for. 
I kind of just fell into this job. I didn't have any gun experience really, just a little bit of video experience. But if anything, that is proof that with a little bit of patience, everybody, anybody can figure out how to install tandem cross parts. <laughs> I hope these videos have been helpful over the past few years and I hope that they continue to help you. It's been an interesting ride. I've learned a lot, seen a lot, done a lot of cool stuff. Um, and I guess thanks for watching and thanks to Tandem Cross for giving me the opportunity to do all this stuff. Uh, well, I'll see you around. Well, I probably won't actually. Bye.